good morning children i will be taking third experiment today to demonstrate that light is necessary for photosynthesis again we'll take a potted plant we'll put it in the dark room for at least 48 hours to discharge the leaves of the plant after that we'll take out that plant and will cover one of the leaves with black paper on which a design is cut so only one leaf is covered with a black paper and a star shaped design is cut in the middle of the paper we will keep the plant with fixed light screen in light at some at least for 6 hours so that potted plant will be we will be keeping in the sun for at least 6 hours after that we will pluck this leaf which was covered with black paper and we'll perform a starch test on it we'll observe that the middle portion of the leaf in which the design of star shaped was made as well as the parts which were left uncovered they will allow, they a light falls on these parts on the uncovered part and with iodine these parts will turn blue black in color see the next figure bluish in color proving that the starch is being formed because they get all the necessary conditions for photosynthesis but the part which was covered with black paper this covered part was deprived of light so with iodine this covered part surrounding the star design was the covered part this covered part as was not getting light turns brown in color with iodine proving that no starch formation has taken place why because the covered part is not getting the light so this proves that light is necessary for photosynthesis then i'll take the fourth experiment to prove that chlorophyll is also necessary for photosynthesis again we'll take a plotted plant with variegated leaves variegated leaves means the leaves which have some green and some non green areas the leaf totally is not green some part of the leaf is green some part of the leaf is non green yellowish in color an example is coleus croton again we'll take this potted plant with variegated leaves and we will keep it in the dark room at least for about 48 hours to discharge the leaves of the plant then we will bring back the plant and will expose that plant to the sunlight for few hours then we will pluck one leaf from that plant and we will draw the outline of that leaf on the paper and making the green marking the green and the non green areas that is distribution of chlorophyll now we will put this leaf for starch test we'll boil it in the water to kill the cells then we'll boil it in methylated spirit or alcohol to remove chlorophyll and then we'll put it in hot water to soften it and then we will take out that leaf and put it on a dish and then we'll test it for the starch with the help of a solution that is iodine solution we'll put a drop of iodine on the leaf the part of the leaf which was non green that is chlorophyll was not present turns brown in color with iodine proving that no starch formation has taken place that means no photosynthesis and the green part of the leaves they turn blue in color with iodine proves that photosynthesis has taken place in this area of green portion of the leaf and starch formation has taken place so this experiment proves that the part containing chlorophyll 
undergoes the process of photosynthesis and the part without chlorophyll does not carry on the process of photosynthesis next is we will come to the next experiment number 5 that is to prove that oxygen is involved evolved in photosynthesis that is oxygen is given out in photosynthesis theoretically we have proved it that plants they take in carbon dioxide as a raw material with water and they in the presence of light and chlorophyll they prepare food in the form of glucose and oxygen is being evolved we'll prove this by an experiment c will take a beaker and fill it up to 3/4 with the water then we'll put a hydrilla plant at the bottom of the beaker hydrilla plant is an aquatic plant which can take in dissolved carbon dioxide which can absorb the carbon dioxide dissolved in water we will cover the plant with a inverted short stemmed funnel the funnel we will level of the water in the beaker is above the level of the stem of the funnel this inverted funnel now we will invert a test tube filled with water over the funnel stem can you see this test tube now we'll keep this set up in the sunlight for some time after some time we will observe the bubbles of air are seen are being produced and are seen rising up to the test tube on its upper side and so the bubbles are seen from rising from the plant through the stem of the funnel and are seen collected at the upper end of test tube in order to give space to the bubbles form the water level falls down in the test tube when sufficient amount of this bubbles of gas is collected in the test tube it is tested with the help of glowing splinter we'll just tilt the test tube and we'll put a glowing splinter into the test tube that glowing splinter will burst into flame proving that the gas supports combustion and that is oxygen so the gas in the test tube is oxygen and it is more as compared to the atmospheric air and oxygen is being evolved in the process of photosynthesis now in order to increase the speed of photosynthesis the rate of reaction we will we can add a pinch of sodium bicarbonate in the water of the beaker as this will act as a source of carbon dioxide so more of carbon dioxide the plant will get more of oxygen will be faster will be the photosynthesis process more of oxygen will be released so this proves that oxygen is being given out in the process of photosynthesis now the next experiment we'll do is experiment number 6 to demonstrate that different wavelengths of light have different effects on rate of photosynthesis we'll take a potted plant and again we'll destarch the leaves how we are going to destarch it we'll put that potted plant in the dark room for at least 48 hours so all the starch already present in the leaves will be removed from the leaves and will be collected in the storage organs of the plant and the now the leaves will be free of starch we'll put one leaf in ganon's large light screen box this box is a light screen box having glass strips of three different colors blue red and green in the middle we'll keep this plant for 2 to 3 hours in the sunlight and then we'll test for starch the part under red color the plant is in this box the part which is under red color has maximum starch formation and with iodine solution and turns blue black in color with iodine the blue has lesser compared to the red strip 
the blue has lesser star and the area covered by green color shows no starch formation so no blue black color with iodine solution so one of the leaves has been put in this box then we will take out that leaf we'll put for starch test the starch test means all the steps we'll boil we'll boil it in hot water then we'll put it in the chloro methylated spirit remove chlorophyll then we'll put this leaf under the te iodine test we'll put a drop of iodine in this area where there was red glass strip this turns blue black in color showing the presence of starch then the middle area which was having a green glass strip there it with iodine it turns brown in color no starch formation and the blue color shows slight change in the blue color less formation of starch so different wavelengths of light affects the rate of photosynthesis it is maximum in the red wavelength then lesser in the blue and green has no green shows no process of photosynthesis so the result is photosynthesis takes place in the visible part of electromagnetic radiations different wavelengths of light influence photosynthesis differently blue and red regions of the visible spectrum are the most effective and green is the least so till here we have done today and tomorrow i'll be taking the further part of this chapter thank you